What's up guys, I'm Miles Ryder and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix. Basically how this is going to work is that I'll have one main review video, the one you're watching right now, in which I'll attempt to overview all the main important stuff to at least a basic level of detail. Uh, then I'll probably make at least one, most likely several follow-up sub-reviews that will be to show you uh, specific important aspects and features about the Helix. Thinkpads have always had a certain style to them due to the classically inspired design aesthetics. This is especially true of late now that Lenovo has updated certain aspects of their design including the key shape you have here, uh, the trackpads, and a few other minor aspects to modernize their designs. This is especially true with the Helix here. There's no mistaking it for a late 90s laptop. It's sleek, it's pretty stylish, especially with the new trackpad design that we'll go into later in the review. It certainly has an excellent feel. As with many other ThinkPad products, we get a really nice feeling rubberized plastic coating on most of the device. That's all around the frame here, really the frame of the dock and the back of the tablet part. In some implementations, this can feel cheap, but on the ThinkPad Helix, it really feels premium. There's no mistaking this for a cheap device just because it's made out of plastic, or at least coated with plastic. Ports-wise, basically we get mirrored ports on both the dock and the tablet part. So we have a USB 3 here, and here. We have a mini display port here for video out, and we have the charging port right there. And as you can see on the tablet part, we have the charging port, we have a SIM card slot. Mine doesn't actually open since I don't have the uh, radio for that. It's not one of the models with that included. Mini display port. And that is a USB 2. So we only get USB 2 on the tablet, but we get two 3s if you have it docked. Camera-wise, we have a 2 megapixel front-facing camera here, which records in 1080p. And we have a rear facer here, which is 5 megapixels and also records in 1080p. Neither of the cameras are anything to write home about, but they both get the job done well. Lenovo has gotten tablet keyboard docking right, where so many others have missed the chance. The docking mechanism here is really a joy to use, that's the only way I can put it. It's easy. You simply press the button right here on the side, and you can lift the tablet part up with one hand. It's incredibly easy, it's, it, it's really nice to use, it's fun. Now one of the really cool things about the Helix is that it's, you, you don't just, you're not limited to one way to put this on here. If I move the flap back, you can see there are two docking pin areas, so it, it's reversible. I can just pick up the tablet and put it back on in reverse, and it just snaps right back on there. So you have either a display mode or you can fold it all the way back into what they call tablet plus mode. The magnetic flap here is also a really nice feature in of itself. As you can see, if I just bring it to here, it's kind of straining a little bit at me to snap back down into place. It's also much sturdier than a lot of the videos make it look like it is. Um, as you can see, there's hardly any flex here, uh, which is really cool considering that it's such a thin piece of material. Basically, the purpose of it is to make the device more aesthetically pleasing, however it's docked, uh, give you a handhold if you have it in Tablet Plus mode, because obviously it's thicker and heavier in that, w in that mode. It also allows better airflow, as you can see from the two fans right under there. It's worth noting that you can only open the Helix to about 120 degrees, as you can see right here. However, as with some other tablet hybrids like this, like uh, the NVX2 for instance, you won't have any issues with the balance of weight. The dock to tablet weight ratio is excellently balanced, so as you can see, this isn't going to be falling over unless you really want to tip it over. The keyboard on the Helix is just as awesome as those on full ThinkPad laptops. There's hardly any flex, and there's an absolutely fantastic level of key travel, especially considering how thin the dock is. 
It's comfortable layout-wise, and all the keys make a very satisfying sound as you type. Not loud, just nice. On the touchpad side of things, we get a standard Lenovo track point here. That's the red nub that's used for navigation and was used more often uh, back before touchpads were around or when they were not as good. Now, if you're familiar with Lenovo designs, ThinkPad designs, then you'll notice the three buttons designed to, for use with the track point uh, are not on, they're not, they're not anywhere in here, it's just the trackpad. Uh, well, they're actually not missing, they've just been incorporated into the touchpad. As you can see, not only can you use the whole touchpad to click, but at the top here, we have a dedicated area for left, middle, and right clicking with, while using the track point up there in the keyboard. The touchpad itself is fantastic as well. There's no need to press hard on this. It has a good level of resistance and uh, multi-touch gestures, um, which are important, especially with Windows 8 and really anything these days, uh, work much better on this than on most other Windows 8 laptops out there. One of the most important aspects of any device is the display it uses, especially for touchscreen devices. It's what you're going to be looking at the entire time you use it. I'm happy to report that the Helix has a fantastic display as well. At a resolution of 1920 by 1080, full 1080p obviously, the pixel density is nice, it's crisp, you can, you can distinguish pixels if you look closely enough, but at any normal viewing distance, you can't. Viewing angles are also really nice, as I'll demonstrate here. So to use the common descriptor, it's as if the images are floating on top of the glass. This is good, especially when you consider that this is a touchscreen device. The touch input is great, it's responsive, and when you're touching something that uses a touchscreen interface, you want the image to be as close to your finger as possible, which this most certainly is. Lastly, at 400 nits of brightness, you're ensured in nice, accurate colors, and it's really easily viewable even in bright light. It can also dim almost to no backlight at all, which is almost where it's at for me right now, uh, to make it easier on the camera again. Um, so if you want to use this thing in the dark, you're not going to be squinting into excessive amounts of brightness. One of the big appeals of a device like this is the stylus input. As you can see right here, it just tucks right into the body of the tablet. And, um, it's a nice thin status, uh, stylus, it doesn't require any batteries or anything like that. And it uses Wacom's Active Digitizer technology. The specs say that this is this digitizer and this stylus will register for over 2,000 levels of pressure. It's certainly an impressive claim, and really, in my testing, I can back that up. It, it's incredibly pressure sensitive, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's uh, it's very accurate. Really, the only fault the, there are only two faults with the stylus input. One is that WinTab drivers are not yet available. So that means uh, while stuff like OneNote here will work, or um, many apps that you'll find in the Windows 8 store, um, those will work with pressure sensitivity, but various things like uh, Photoshop, for instance, or Adobe Illustrator will not work yet. But the driver for that is apparently on the way. The second fault is that near the edges of the device, you can, get, you can run into some issues with uh, the what you're writing being a little further away than you'd like from where the stylus is. It's really hard for me to show you this on video, uh, but basically, as long as you stay like half a centimeter to a centimeter away from the very edge of it uh, when you're writing, you'll be totally fine. The accuracy is great. And hopefully this is something that could be fixed with a software patch later down the road. It's not by any means a deal breaker, but it might annoy some users. Now, the speakers on mobile devices are generally acknowledged to kind of suck. However, on the Helix, really, I found that they don't. They're, they're pretty good. 
They're also very low profile. The speakers are here, and uh, I don't have it in the shot at the moment, but on the other side, it's in the same place, right down there on the bezel. You hardly notice it. It's just a very small gap. And especially considering the size of that, they sound really great. Uh, they get plenty loud, and they actually have a decent level of bass. So they definitely don't sound tinny. So first off, the model I'm using here is a baseline i7 processor version with 8GB of RAM. It costs around $2,000. The base model uses an i5 processor, 4GB of RAM, and starts around $1499. So depending on what model you get, you're going to have different performance. However, with mine, I was really impressed of at what I got out of it. The rendering of HD video in Premiere Pro was pretty snappy, and uh, a as it was with the rest of the Creative Suites. Opening programs is very quick as well due to the SSD. It's a snappy computer. One thing that you do have to remember though is that it's all packed into a tablet body. When it's under a heavy load, like rendering 1080p video at maximum quality in Premiere Pro or something like that, the upper right region of the tablet, from your perspective when you're using it of course, uh, by the ThinkPad logo here, gets really hot. Uh, not device meltingly so or anything like that, but it can get hot enough that you wouldn't want to touch it there. As for battery life, uh, my experience was really good. So far in five days of owning the Helix, I have yet to recharge it during my standard work day. Now, I'm not rendering HD video or doing 3D models the entire time, but it's good battery life nonetheless. So I haven't run full benchmarks, like uh, running an HD video with Wi-Fi off and stuff like that, seeing how long it'll last. Um, but I will do that when I get the chance later this week. So uh, when I do that, I'll add it. So in short, uh, I think that the Helix here is the best implementation of the tablet hybrid whatever it is, the new category of that, that I've used or seen. It's, it's a really great product. Really the only downside is that it's, it's pricey. It starts at $14.99. Now that does come with all of the abilities like having the ability to have a full tablet experience as well as that of an ultrabook. And the stylus input and all of that. It comes with benefits. And the price is due to all of the custom engineering that had to go into making this. Because nothing like this existed. It's not just an update of one of the existing ThinkPad lines. So basically I give my wholehearted recommendation to buying this if you have the money for it. And if you think it would suit your needs. It's a great device. As always, if you have any questions for me about the device or about anything else, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment. I'll try to reply to all of them. Uh, I'll be uploading the other sub-reviews, uh, hopefully later this week. And lastly, something new, uh, if you'd like me to review any other products, uh, feel free to do the same thing, leave a comment or shoot me a message, and thumbs up if you've seen one already suggested. Uh, I also appreciate subscriptions and thumbs up on the video if you like my content. Um, but yeah, anything that's suggested, I can't promise I'll be able to review it, but if it's suggested especially a lot, I will do my best to get my hands on one. Until next time, this has been a review of the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix. Thank you.